Hi, I'm Wyatt Reeves, guide for Black Earth Angling Company. Uh, today we're tying up the rusty, crusty crane fly. So let's get cracking. Okay, so for this pattern, you're going to want to prep your legs. All right, so I'm going to take my pheasant tail, um, and then I'm usually going to stroke off about a couple swords off of it. Um, you can go with up to three. I really like to use two. Um, it just looks better on smaller flies. Uh, bigger ones, I like to go with four swords. And I'm going to take my pheasant tail itself and tug it between these two fingers. And then between my pointer finger and my thumb, that's where I'm going to bring these swords up and kind of tuck them there and that'll help a lot with wrapping these legs. I'm going to make a little arch in there. Now you can take your tweezers or a pair of hemostats and you don't want to go in through the back, you actually want to go in right here through the front. If you're going through the back you won't be able to get that loop or you'll just end up kind of torquing it right off the quill. So I'm going to go in, I'm just going to do just a little loop here, right? And then I'm going to keep those tweezers tight. And then once I get up to here, when it's pinned up against my finger, that's when I'm gonna open them up and just grab them. So I'll just go in there and grab them right there. And now this is where I pull them through. And it doesn't matter if they're kind of still in there, you can just take your fingers, kind of play with that and bring them out. And what you're looking for is this nice little L shape in the joint there. Once your legs are prepped, um, you're going to use a size 8 2x long dry fly hook um, and you're going to use a 6 odd orange thread. Um, I like orange because a lot of the crane flies, especially around here in Wisconsin, have kind of like an orange look to them and I just think it pairs really well with the fly pattern. So what I like to use for dubbing the body is a Spectra Blend dry fly rust color. It's kind of the color you're going after here. Um, when you're adding this, I like my, my bodies to be rather thin. Um, so always add um, the thinnest amount that you can, and that'll usually do it for you. I always think I'm putting uh, too little on, and then it ends up being the perfect amount. So I kind of have some leftover um, dubbing wax on my fingers, and I just like to do that to kind of mat down all those fibers and to get a real nice even body on that. With this, I can potentially add just a little bit more dubbing. I'll just add one more small noodle to it. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to add our legs. And I like to go about a quarter inch behind the knot. Uh, I don't like to tie up to the knot because you kind of want to show that little jointedness in your leg. So I'll kind of have that stick out just a little bit and you want this to be splayed down. All right, so we will secure that in right in front of that dubbing there. If she kicks out, you can kind of manipulate that underneath that thread to, to splay down. With the same thing on the other side. And the point in this is going to be facing the bend in the hook. So you want to make sure you face them back. Give it a couple wraps and kind of manipulate your legs to have them come out. So now we're going to cut that excess right there. So what you're basically making is an X on the top with your legs. So you have two going back and then two going forward. Kind of manipulate that one around to kind of see well on top of there. And it's really super easy to mistake uh, your excess legs um, for the legs that you just tied in. So what I like to do is to kind of just remember that uh, your ends will have this kind of hide from the quill that you ripped up, it will kind of be kind of white and squirrely. So just make sure that you uh, pay attention to that because it's really easy to snip off the legs you just tied in. All right, so once we have that in there, I'm now gonna tie in my hackle. 
when I'm sizing this hackle up, I don't really go with a hackle gauge because that's going to uh, kind of create it flush with the hook point there. What I like to do is I like to kind of have it be an oversized uh, hackle. I like to have it hang off uh, past the point of the hook about a quarter inch. Uh, that's going to really um, help my skating effect that I'm going after with this pattern. So some people like to keep their swords in when they're securing this in. I like to kind of keep it a bare quill. So I'm just going to wrap in that, that piece of that quill. And as I have that secured in, now I'm going to add my wings. Uh, my wings, I'm using like a gray rooster saddle. Um, these are just really small uh, feather tips right here. And I'm just going to put one in on both sides like I did my legs. So I like my wing to kind of go just a little bit, just a touch past bend in the hook there. So I can kind of strip out my swords a little bit put this up to size and how I want it size it up a little bit Alright, now you can cut out that that uh, spare part of that quill that's hanging off the end of your wing. And now what we're going to do is we're going to wrap forward, and as we're wrapping forward, oh, looks like I left a little piece of quill there I can cut out. There we go. So as I'm about to wrap forward, I'm going to take my fingers, I'm going to push these legs back, and I'm going to bring that thread forward. And now you can see my legs are now splaying out more to the side, which is what you want to go after right there. So now we're going to add two more legs, which will give it a total count of six legs with this fly. And these two legs are going to be facing forward off the eye of the hook here. So again, quarter inch behind that knot, that's where you're going to secure it. So I'm going to bring these wraps forward. There we go. Now I'm going to secure that in. I'm going to hold those back so those don't those don't mess up my wraps here. And I'm going to secure this in. I've got my other leg. Put it in on the other side. Let's cut out that excess hanging off the back there. Clean that up. I'm gonna do just a couple more securing wraps to kind of lock those legs in there, create a nice kind of thread body. Now I'm gonna push this back. I'm gonna take this thread and wrap forward again. So now it's right behind the eye of the hook there. And you see I'm kind of constantly playing with these legs, getting them to where I want to go. If there's any editing I have to do, I can just go back and do that. So now I can start to wrap in my hackle. So now I got my wraps behind that leg. I'm now going to kind of manipulate these legs as I'm going in between these because uh, it's really easy to lock these legs down with your hackle fibers. So you kind of want to have to wiggle them in between and kind of get that to go around all your legs. See I'm kind of wiggling that hackle, having it go in between there. I'm going to hold these two legs back, bring these forward, give this just a couple more wraps with my hackle, and now I can secure this hackle right in there. I'm just going to keep brushing back these legs so I can lock that in there. I'm going to cut off my piece of excess hackle. Hold back all this material, clean up that head, and I'm going to give it a whip finish, and we should be done. And there you have it, the rusty crane fly. 
All right, Wyatt. Uh, do you have any uh, tying notes for this uh, pattern? Uh, yeah, so I like to uh, prep all my legs. Um, I really like to prep my hackle beforehand and my wings. I will basically build like little tiny kits, um, just set them out. Wings, hackle, legs, wings, hackle, legs, and then just go on from there. Um, it really helps building these up really quickly, um, so I'm not doing it as I'm going. I just think it takes too much time. Yeah, that's great, great advice. Uh, so when do, you, when do you like to fish this thing? Uh, whenever I see crane flies. Um, whenever I'm seeing crane crane flies out. And not necessarily rising fish, just whenever I'm seeing crane flies, I'm like most likely going to prefer this fly over anything else. So, yeah. Excellent. And, and like, is there a certain way you like to fish it? Yeah. So the great thing about the crane fly is the fact that it kind of reminds me of streamers in the way that I can actively fish it. Um, instead of just casting it upstream, having it drift down. Uh, I could basically, like, you can skate it, plop it, uh, you can fish it wet, you can sink it underneath something. Um, it's basically, it's really active, like how you're quartering a bank with a streamer, stripping it in, you're basically doing that same thing, just skating it on top of the water, bringing it back. You can fish it up, down, sideways, upside down, like whatever you want. <laughs> like, it's 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 a really fun, fun dry fly to fish, so. Yeah, I would say, uh, you know, crane flies are are certainly underfished by most people in the drift list. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And, and like, this thing is, like, a T-bone steak to a trout. So, I mean, I've, I've caught, actually, like, my biggest fish I've caught on dries in the drift list have been on crane flies. So, I just think that they're kind of a slept on fly still, and more people need to fish them, for sure. So. There you have it. Yeah. Is there, do, do you usually, uh, do you grease them up or anything like that to keep them, keep them up? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I actually, a day beforehand, what I'll do is I'll take um, like a uh, this one this one brand that I really like is called Flyagra, which is the <laughs> right. which is actually the uh, name of it. And I like to pre-treat them all before I go out. So when you pre-treat these flies, this hackle really gets a like a hydrophobic layer on it, and you can really skate them. Like you thought that you could skate a fly before with like gink on it. I mean these things go across the water like butter. So I'll I'll usually like pre pre soak about twelve of them. And just leave them in my box separated from my other ones so I know, okay, these ones are pre-soaked and these ones are not. And they work great like all day. So up to four hours. So contact your local fly shop if they stay up for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. Uh, well, shoot. Thanks for uh, showing us this pattern. Yeah, no problem. All right, folks. That does it for this episode of Drinking with Scissors. Thanks for tuning in. And be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with more Drinking with Scissors episodes. Also, do yourself a favor and head on over to blackearthangling.com to see all the awesome things we're up to. Until next time, cheers.